Brian, your latest book is about America's first war. Uh, and what's interesting is it's the same part of the world that we're now military engaged in again today. It is amazing, and I think most people probably don't know that story. Not only do I love the story, but I thought people could see today's challenges in the story back in 1785, and that essentially was pirates under the guise and using the Koran as inspiration where would take uh, plunder ships, enslave the crew, and, and so, uh, just take the cargo. And they would do it with everybody. Unless, of course, you wrote a check, which was essentially a bribe, they called them back then tributes. With America, without a navy, we look like the softest touch you can possibly imagine. So we're always, we're in the wrong neighborhood, just trying to trade our goods, and next thing you know, the dolphin gets taken, D-A-U-H-P-H-I-N, the Bessie and the Maria. Our crews are enslaved. America, this young nation trying to get on its feet and get out of, uh, get out of war debt, is uh, horrified because they hear about how horrific the enslavement is and the torture that they were going under. And, of course, the, the question came down between Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, the debate over do we do, we do what everybody else does, which is just pay these guys off? Right. Uh, do we try to do diplomacy, or do we do we decide we're going to fight? I mean, it's a kind of an age-old decision-making. And it's just the thing we're having today. You know, we had, you know, George Bush, we got to go take these guys on. But we avoided the war as long as possible until 9-11 happened. Then we're going to go find out what their problem is and smoke them out of their caves. So with, uh, with Jefferson, they were in the same meeting. They understand the mindset. But Jefferson walked out and said, my goodness, we have to fight these guys. We can't write the checks. And John Adams says, you know, we, we, uh, we can't fight them. We don't have a Navy that's going to take them on. We don't have the money. And America does not have the stomach for a long war. Here we are a couple of years old. And John Adams successfully and accurately talked about the American psyche is that we don't really want to get involved in foreign wars. That's why we came here to begin with. Let France and Britain and Spain have their rivalries. That's not America. But we're having that same debate again today. Barack Obama is very, feel, very much feels as though we should back out of there, let these people do their own thing. The ISIS is the JV team. The caliphate is not our issue. I never would have went into Iraq. And others are saying, well, if we are not doing anything, the caliphate will stabilize. A country, an evil country, will take root. And then we're all going to be in trouble, especially when that country focuses its crosshairs and its ire at us. So you can only look away for so long. And that's what Adams would eventually find out. And Jefferson knew, by the time I take office, this problem is going to be untenable. And sure enough, it was. When he was Secretary of State, he told Washington in a report that all indications are we're better off standing up for ourselves and not paying the money. But when he became president, he actually implemented that policy. What would you say is the biggest lesson that our current political leaders could, today could learn from this historical lesson? If, if I was to take the lessons from this book and apply it to today, and if the leaders said, uh, whether it's President Obama, the next president, or the previous president, what do you learn? You have to stand up that the, these terrorists, Islamic extremists in this case and in the current case, only understand power and they only understand strength. Not just a show of power. We tried that with the blockade. You have to show a willingness to use that power and a willingness to stick with the fight. Bombing from the shore, like bombing from the sky, bombing from the shore, would only be so effective. Sooner or later, sadly, which wasn't the case, you have to go on the ground. And they had success when they went on the ground, and you threatened the stability of that regime, and sadly, that's the only thing that's going to happen. When these leaders feel threatened, when they understand they're not going to be allowed to exist, we're not going to turn away, and we have the strength to implement our, our demands, I think we have a game, it's game on. If not, I think we're going to be victims. Brian Kilme, it's a great read. Thank you very much. It's called Thomas Jefferson and the Tri Tripoli Pirates. And it's where we get the, the famed Marine hymn, right? From the halls of Montezuma to the shores, shores of Tripoli. Of Tripoli.